Scott Garrett, Republican from New Jersey, is here with me on set. Before we get to anything else, can you tell us what was your take on what you just heard that the Obama administration did this small business problem way back in August, didn't say anything for months? So, well, it's certainly not surprising to me, and it's probably not surprising to the American public. You've seen the polls where the majority of Americans right now do not um, have faith or trust this administration. And I guess most people think, is it either incompetence by the White House or was the White House intentionally deceiving them? And after this report, I guess it's a little mix of both of those. And neither alternative is all that uh, yeah, encouraging if you're good. following government. Well, let's move on to the Volcker rule, because okay. as new reports come out, a couple of things uh, are raising some concerns. Sure. Now, the first is that, that the Volcker rule could stop banks because they're so interested in stopping them from proprietary trading for their own ca accounts, even though that didn't cause the meltdown, uh, that now the banks are going to be unable to hedge other risks, even risks that their clients take where the client owns the bank money. Right. Are you worried about that? I I'm worried about that. I mean, if you go back to the beginning on this, this the whole issue of trying to move Volcker along was, what's the expression? Oh, a, a solution in search of a problem, right? And then when you asked, or people asked uh, Secretary Liu, what are the rules going to be like, which are just basically coming out, as you're pointing out right now, what was his word answer? His answer was, well, they're going to be tough. He didn't say that they're going to be fair. They didn't say they're going to be just. He didn't say that they're going to be appropriate. He didn't say that they're actually going to address a problem or solve a problem. And he didn't say that they're not going to cause other problems like you're suggesting right here. They're just simply going to be tough. And I think that's the whole overall problem here. Is the Volcker rule yeah. mainly aimed at fixing things that went wrong to stop another button, or is it aimed at smacking and punishing? Well, there's a lot of smacking and punishing going on around here because that's the second portion of uh, Lou's statement. Is said that he's actually just trying to implement the president's vision. And we know what the president's vision is, has been of the financial services industry and Wall Street and big banks, is that they're evil, they're bad. And so, as you say, it's just really smacking them down. And it's just smacking not just the, you know, the big guys around us back here, but the small guys are going to be impacted by this, too. Even the littlest firms, yeah, just like with Sarbanes-Oxley, it hurt the tiniest firms the most and, and, and swallowed up a big part of their growth. Right. But, uh, but, and then this latest uh, requirement that the CEO's signature shall be required to yeah. say that they've done anything right. You know, I remember they required that during the Sarbanes-Oxley thing, which had nothing to do with stopping the next meltdown. Had nothing to do. It didn't solve that problem. And you have to scratch your head on this one and say, well, really? It took three years for them to come up with that, that proposal? We've been waiting all this idea. Right. And, and what does that really do? Really what they're doing is punting once again. They're saying, we can't, we, the regulators, the experts in Washington, the bureaucrats, we really can't de decide between what proprietary trading is and, and, making, right. and market making. So we're going to punt and kick it over to the CEOs of these companies. And they're going to have to scratch their heads and, and decide to do it, or probably not do it which is going to hurt. And the other thing is when you're a CEO yeah. and your accounting team tells you everything's all right or they say it's good, you're, you're not going to pour back in and investigate yourself. You're just going to sign what they tell you to, to, to sign. Right. But so, one last thing, though. Sure. The Volcker rule, yeah. I could swear that was passed with bipartisan support and that plenty of Republicans loved smacking those banks around and cracking down on proprietary trading that did not cause the meltdown. Right. Aren't you guys guilty, too? No, I, I, don't, I don't quite remember it that way. I'm sure there was some Republican who made up that concern. But, I mean, this was part, this was not part of the original Dodd-Frank piece of legislation as it passed out of the House, where it was all Democrat support. It came in later on by Democrat in initiatives over there. And this, this was all part of a, a Democrat push, a White House push, to try to address a problem that really doesn't exist with a solution that's not the right one. And I've kind of forgotten this thing you brought yeah. up. Uh, the Paul Volcker, for whom the rule is and himself, reportedly commented, I don't like it, but there it is. And there it is. And there the problem is going to be for all Americans and businesses as well. So there's no changing this? There's no move afoot to try to alter some of this? Uh, we've been trying, trying to put pressure on the, the regulators to do the right thing. They have not listened to us. You know, all these changes that we're going to try to see in this and Dodd-Frank is probably not going to come to we get a change in the White House and a change in the Senate. Oh, my gosh. That's a couple of years away, maybe. That's, yeah, uh, that's a ways down the road. All right. Well, we appreciate you being with here Thanks today. Thank you very much, uh, Rep. Scott Garrett of New Jersey.